Morning news watching Wall Street, the Dow up 63 points. You know, we had a Bay Area company ring the opening bell, a Gigimon out of Milpitas. They went public today, uh, raising $128 million. So if you're a realtor or a car salesman in Milpitas, you're probably going to have a pretty good month. Uh, companies go public, usually people on the board, right? And the employees tend to do pretty well. You are correct. And <laughs> some of them will even stop by Tesla. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah put some deposits some down some on there. Some speculative money. Yeah, okay, pretty interesting there. We're watching also, I was uh, listening in a part of that Facebook conference call yesterday. It was their first investor call, right, since they went public. A lot of people questioning Zuckerberg about the stock price. He didn't really seem to... It was their first annual it. shareholder meeting. Okay. Slightly different. Yes. Um, not They've had conference calls before. Um, as a publicly traded company, they do that every 90 days. The CEO Mark Zuckerberg said there's fundamentally nothing wrong with what we did. He is disappointed with the share price. That's what I like in a CEO. Operate your company. The share price will find its own level. I personally think it was overbought. It was speculative. I think everyone in America wanted it, and that contributed to some of the problems with the IPO for Facebook. One year later, the stock's down tremendously, but the company continues to operate on their fundamental strategy, which is what you want to see. We had a global sell-off yesterday, and then uh, once the U.S. markets opened, it kind of hit as well. We were down over 100 points yesterday. It looks like we're bouncing back a bit today. Yeah, a lot of commodity sell-off, mm -hmm. i.e. global sell-off. We start going, what's wrong? Greece is wrong. Italy had some problems with their bonds. Uh, on top of that, Spain did as well. It became more expensive for them to borrow. Nickel was a big loser. What's interesting to note about this, and here's my conspiracy theory of the day, oil prices are remaining stubbornly high. Every other metal, every other piece of energy in the commodity complex has sold off aggressively, i.e. thinking that the world economy is going to slow, we won't need the commodities, no inflation, but oil staying stubbornly high, and I blame the, the Saudi sheiks on that one. Yeah, and also, yeah, considering the fact that we're producing more oil than ever right here in the United States, there's definitely a conspiracy behind that, it would seem. It's a good theory. That's my theory. All right, so uh, as we watch here, you know, I hear more analysts just talking about how they're really just confident that the second half of this year is going to be really good for the U.S. economy. Makes you a little nervous, right? Yeah, doesn't it? So when we're all correct and we're all patting each other on the back about the great end of the year market, it makes you a little bit nervous. But the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. We've seen decent employment numbers inside the United States. That gives us, the, you know, the capitalism is live and well. Corporations hire people when we need to because business picks up. Uh, Europe is dealing with their socialism issues, which I still think Europe's fine. Um, they're handling their 2,000-year-old economies A-OK -okay in the Germany and France's Greece periphery, not that important. So uh, it's OK. It looks like a good, strong back of the end of the year rally. So maybe we get a 5% correction here, but we definitely don't get a 10% correction. OK, fingers crossed. Thank you, Rob. We'll check yep. back with Rob at 915 for today's winners and losers on Wall Street. Darian.